All right. Hello, everyone. Good evening. I hope y'all are doing well and enjoying your summer so far. Uh, my name is Bethany Gary, and I am the Assistant Director of Residence Life here at Seton Hill. Um, I'm starting my third year on the Hill, so I consider myself a junior. Um, so I'm still kind of learning the ropes myself, so we'll be in this together. So um, tonight's session is called Life on the Hill, and it's just going to talk a little bit about what is it like to live on campus, what is it like to be part of the student body, and just kind of be involved on campus. Um, so just some things to think about as you're preparing to come to the Hill. Believe it or not, we're just over a month away from um, when we're getting started to do move-in and welcome weekend and all that stuff. So believe it or not, we'll be there before we know it. Um, so some things to make sure that you're doing is signing up for the virtual orientation sessions, which you already did this evening. Um, so just RSVP for any sessions that you're coming to. It's a great opportunity to get to know information about Seton Hill and to get to know some of your classmates. Um, also get to know um, everything about your MacBook. We are a Mac campus, an Apple campus. And so um, you will be getting a MacBook in the mail if you haven't already. And I think Matt, you said you wanted to chime in on that. Yeah, I'm not sure if anyone here already has received their MacBook. I uh, might see some, yeah, some nods and some smiling faces. If you have not received your MacBook, don't worry. So the process that happens throughout the summer is our registrar sets up everyone's class schedule. Once your class schedule is set up, you'll receive an email from your academic advisor. Some academic advisors like to email through your shoe email account or some like to call. So again, uh, you make sure you're accessible via whatever cell phone you have in the system or your email. They will set up a meeting with you. And as soon as that meeting is done and your class schedule is confirmed, when you log into my shoe, you'll have a prompt to put in your mailing address and get your MacBook. And so it seems like it's been working for some. So if you haven't, don't worry. I promise you'll get your MacBook soon, MacBook soon once you get everything set up with your academic advisor. But there's no need for you to reach out to your academic advisor unless you haven't heard from them later on this month. And we can help you out with that. Great. Thank you so much, Matt. Who's excited to have a MacBook and get to learn how to use it? They're amazing. Um, one of my favorite things about having a MacBook is that you can, any of our classrooms on campus, you can share your screen to the projector. Um, so it makes it really easy and not have to hook up with a bunch of cords and stuff like that. It's really nice. Um, another thing that you can do as you're prepping to come to campus here in the fall is to start following some of our accounts on social media. If you just type in Seton Hill on any major social media um, platform, you'll be able to find a bunch of different things. These are just some that I recommend specifically on Instagram. Um, so Seton Hill University is kind of our main Seton Hill page. Seton Hill Res Life is our residence life page. Student Life is what we call it, S-H-U Dent Life. Um, it's kind of our student engagement, student activities um, profile. And then S-H-U underscore O-D-I-I-S-S -S, um, is our office for um, international student services and diversity and inclusion. So um, definitely follow those and start to kind of see what are the types of things that are happening on campus. And it'll kind of pique your interest to think things that you may want to keep a lookout for when you get to campus in the fall. Um, another thing to start looking at is ordering your books. Um, so log on to Griffin Gate and look at your class schedules. Um, you can start ordering your books. It'll list um, the list of all the books that you'll need. You can get those from the bookstore, or if you have a different online um, store that you like to order things through, you can check that out as well. Um, so some things about move in, and once you're really ready to get here on campus, um, just some dates for you to keep in mind. Um, July 21st is a date that you want to kind of keep in the back of your mind, because that is the date that you'll get an email about your move in date and time. Um, so this is when you will be able to come to campus and move all of your belongings in. Um, if you want some more specific information about move in and just what to bring and moving into the halls, all of that kind of stuff, you can go to this website here. Um, I believe Matt was going to put that in the chat for you. So it'd be easy to click and not have to type a million characters. Um, and just to make sure that everything is smooth, that traffic is flowing, um, we're going to be assigning every person a one hour move in window. Um, it's okay if you take a little bit longer than that hour to move in. That's okay. I understand some people have more belongings than others, um, but that's a dedicated hour where you will be assigned to move in with only about nine or 10 other people on campus. Um, and so it'll definitely keep things very smooth and keep the traffic flow moving nicely. Um, so the two dates that we have designated as move in for first year students is going to be August 19th and 20th, and that's a Thursday and a Friday. Um, and that's just kind of the general date, and you'll get a more specific date and time when you get that email on the 21st. 
Um, I would like to note though, there are several groups of students that will be moving in early for a variety of reasons. So football, for example, fall athletes, dance, um, there's a wide variety of different reasons why you might be moving in early the opportunity program. So if there's a different date that you'll be moving in earlier than this 19th or 20th, you will get a separate email that will tell you what that date is. Um, so don't panic if you get an email that says like, your moving date is August 19th at 8 a.m. And you're like, wait, I thought I was supposed to move in earlier than that. Um, so don't panic. But if you have questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, and then also just wanted to make sure you're aware, you've probably heard this all throughout virtual orientation, but Welcome Weekend is gonna be taking place August 20th to the 22nd. And that's when you're gonna get um, the opportunity to meet everybody in your class. You'll get to participate in a lot of fun activities, um, really get that introduction to life on Seton Hills campus. All right, so what everybody wants to know about, the questions that we get the most is about roommates. Um, so exciting news, if you don't know this already, all of the room assignments have been uploaded and are available. Um, so you'll sign into your housing profile and then to get to that, you'll log into your MyShoe, which is my.seatonhill.edu. You've probably all been to that a bunch of times by now. Um, but up in the top right corner, there's a little square that we call the Rubik's Cube. So click the Rubik's Cube and go down to residence. And once you log into residence, there will be a sign that says my room. And that will be the building and room number that you have been assigned to for the fall. Um, if it says wait list, that means that you haven't completed your housing application yet. So make sure that you go ahead and do that housing application as soon as possible um, so that we can get you assigned to a room. Um, and then it'll have a roommate section and it'll list the name and contact information for your roommate. Um, so I would recommend reaching out to your roommate, having a conversation with them, getting to know them. Um, you could, the easiest way is to reach out through your Seton Hill email. So if you get into your Seton Hill email and you type in the person's name, it will automatically populate their email address. Um, we would recommend not just stalking people on social media um, and really taking that opportunity to get to know people and introduce yourself first. Um, and then it's a really good idea to have a conversation about what you're going to be bringing to the room. Um, so when you see on there, you'll be able to see if you have a double, if you have a triple, how many people are going to be in your room. And I would recommend making sure you're not bringing like three of this thing and four of this thing. So really kind of div divide and conquer. I'll bring the rug if you bring the TV and you'll bring the refrigerator. Um, we still only allow one refrigerator per room. Um, so that's a good thing to communicate with the rest of your roommates. Um, roommate or roommates. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit um, later about what things you should and shouldn't bring to the residence halls. Um, but this is a good opportunity to talk about what types of things you're going to be bringing and then just kind of set up the general expectations of what you expect um, with living with another person in the residence hall. And talk about what things you're excited about coming to campus, what things you might be nervous about. It's a good opportunity for you to kind of share those feelings with each other. So that is just kind of quick information about roommates. If you have specific information, feel free to ask any questions um, or reach out to us through email. So this is not an exhaustive list by any means, um, but this is just kind of a quick thing, things to think about as you're starting to pack. Um, so things you might want to bring, um, your favorite mask. Um, we do currently um, have the policy that if you are vaccinated, you're not required to wear a mask on campus. Um, if you're not vaccinated, you will need to wear a mask. Um, but as we all know, throughout the last 18 months of our lives, things change. So I would recommend bringing a mask just in case, you know, the rules or regulations may change at any time. Um, and there may be some times that you might want to have a mask on hand. Um, twin extra long bedding. Um, I could count on a lot of hands, the number of people who bring regular twin size sheets and they're like, hey, why don't these fit on my bed? Um, so make sure that you are looking for twin extra long. Most retailers at this point, around college going back to school time will have twin extra long bedding. Um, so just make sure that it says that on the tag. Um, I would recommend bringing a surge protector. Um, a lot of our buildings were built several years ago, um, so may not have as many outlets as we are used to here in the 21st century. Um, so I'd recommend bringing a surge protector so you have access to a couple more outlets. Um, we don't allow extension cords, um, so surge protectors are usually the best option. And just a little tip, the uh, surge protectors at Ikea are amazing. They have big long cords, they're very nice. It's just a personal tip. Um, sticky tack would be another good thing to bring if you wanna hang anything on your walls. 
Um, we do allow command strips, but just know that in some of the buildings that are like drywall with paint, command strips will still even make damage to the walls. Um, so sticky tack is usually your best option for hanging things on the walls um, or blue painter's tape um, if it's something a little bit more lightweight. Um, I would recommend bringing a fan. Um, most of the halls where our first year students live are not air conditioned. Um, so a fan is definitely gonna be your best friend. Um, I went through all four years of college and didn't have air conditioning all four years and I'm here, I survived, it's possible. Um, but I would recommend getting a box fan or a window fan or just something that can kind of keep the air circulating in your room. Um, also, if you're short like me, I'm 5'2", um, I take a step stool everywhere I go because um, there are some areas of the residence halls where the storage units are a little bit up high. So a step stool is a good thing to have. Um, they make nice, cute little foldable ones for like five or 10 bucks. I think they have them at five below. Um, I would also recommend like a mini first aid kit or just something where you have some like band-aids, neosporin, something like that. And then I would also recommend bringing any type of over-the-counter medication that you take, like if you are starting to feel sick, if you take allergy medicine. Um, so if you usually take pep Pepto-Bismol, if your tummy hurts, I would bring Pepto-Bismol to school with you because mom's not going to be here to give you your Pepto-Bismol. So make sure you have anything that you would need um, if you're not feeling the best. Um, we do have an awesome health services on campus and they're able to provide basic medications and things like that, um, but they are not available 24 hours a day. Um, so sometimes it's nice to just have some of those things on hand in your room. And then I would also recommend shower shoes and a shower caddy. Um, most of the first year halls will have common bathrooms. Um, so you'll be walking down the hall to go to the shower. Um, so I'd recommend flip-flops or some, and then some kind of shower caddy to bring your shower supplies with you. Um, some quick things about what not to bring. Um, so as you are purchasing your mini fridge, I would keep an eye on the size of that. Um, we don't allow refrigerators that are larger than 2.7 cubic feet. Um, so I'd recommend writing that down. Um, we also don't allow candles, incense burners, um, space heaters, basically anything that could cause a fire. Um, we do have like 150 to 300 people living in a building. And so we want to make sure that everybody is staying safe and that we're avoiding any type of fire hazards as possible. Um, leave your BB guns, your knives, your swords, any of those kind of things at home. Um, electrical appliances. Um, we don't permit like hot pots or instant pots or thing blenders, things like that in your room. If you would like, if you're like, I need to have my smoothie every single morning, you're okay to bring it, but you can only use it in the kitchen. Um, every floor has a common kitchen available um, in the residence halls where you can use some of those other appliances, but we don't permit students to use those in the rooms. Um, and then also we really um, are trying to make sure that we're being mindful of the noise in the residence halls. So um, please leave, it, leave any of your large speakers or stereo systems or anything like that at home as well. You're okay to bring like a small Bluetooth speaker or something like that. Um, but anything that's like has a subwoofer probably doesn't need to be in the residence halls. <laughs> um, so keep that in mind as you're packing your sound equipment. Um, also, this is something that kind of catches people off guard a little bit because any college packing list that you see says a Keurig and a microwave on those lists. Um, so we do not allow Keurigs or microwaves in the actual residence hall rooms, but we do provide a Keurig and a microwave on every floor. Um, so you will have access to a Keurig and a microwave. So if you want to bring your K-cups or anything like that, um, you'll be able to bring those to use, um, but you aren't able to have one in your room. It just creates a lot of power surge and we have a lot of flipped and tripped breakers um, if everybody has a Keurig or a microwave in their room. Um, the one exception to that is if you're gonna be living in Deschantel, um, those are, that's our suite style living. We do allow one Keurig and one microwave per suite. Um, but if you're living in Havy, Brownlee, um, or Mara, we won't allow the Keurigs and microwaves in the rooms. You are allowed to have the mini fridge though. Okay, so another thing that we get a lot of questions about is RAs. Who's heard of an RA or a resident assistant? Is that a term that people have heard of before? Awesome, I'm glad to hear that. Um, so as someone who works in residence life, I work very closely with our RAs. They're a phenomenal group of people. Um, so each of our floors in the residence halls is assigned to one to three resident assistants. Um, and they're typically sophomore to senior students. They've been around the block a few times. Um, they know campus pretty well. And they're able to kind of mentor the students on the floor. I like to think of them as kind of like a big brother or sister on the floor, just somebody that you can go to to ask questions, um, to help 
point you in the right direction for different resources on campus. Um, they plan a lot of different activities. Um, they can help with mediating any conflicts. If you're having a disagreement with your roommate, they can help kind of um, guide that conversation um, and are also there to enforce the policies that we have on campus. Um, so making sure that everybody is staying safe and healthy. Um, if you are thinking at all about being an RA, who has thought about maybe I would want to be an RA? Yeah, maybe. So maybe you don't really know exactly what they do to, to say that yet. Um, typically, we start our RA selection process in end of October, beginning of November. Um, so keep an eye out for the flyers and posters about what that process looks like. We'll have some information sessions. Um, and make sure you talk with your RA once you get moved into campus and ask them what their job is like, what they like about it, what they don't like about it, um, and think about if that might be something that's of interest to you. We do offer free room and board um, for our resident assistants. So that's definitely an awesome financial benefit. They work hard. They definitely, it's not an easy job. They definitely work hard, but um, it's worth it to have that free room and board. All right, so moving along here, we also get a lot of questions about safety and security, and that's something that's very important in making sure as we are entrusted with having you on our campus, um, we want to make sure that you stay safe at all times. Um, we have campus police officers that are fully licensed. Is it licensed? I don't know if that's the right word, but they are full police officers. They've been through the academy um, and they are on campus 24 hours a day, 365. They're on campus on Christmas, on New Year's, every day. Um, so if you need anything, there's always somebody on campus that can help out. Um, we also have emergency call stations. Um, have you ever seen like the blue light boxes um, in some of the public places? We have those all throughout campus. Um, and also we have a shuttle available to go back and forth between upper and lower campus. Um, anybody here visual or performing arts? Yeah, so you're probably going to spend a lot of your time down in um, the downtown campus. Um, so it's good to know that we have that shuttle available to take you back and forth from the main campus down to the downtown campus. Um, also something really cool about visual and performing arts, they've added a lot of great dining options um, in the downtown campus over the last couple of years. Um, and our students are very excited about the offerings that have been added. We actually have a food truck on campus now. Um, it's a designated food truck. Um, you'll probably hear more about that at a later session if you um, hear from dining, but it's one of my favorite dining places on campus. They always have really good stuff. Um, also, we have cam cameras to monitor all building entrances and exits to make sure that people, um, that our entrances are secure. And we do require either a student ID and or a key to enter any of our residential areas. Um, so nobody who doesn't live there would be able to have access to any of our residence halls unless they are invited in as a guest and are escorted at all times. Um, and also we have a residence life staff member on call 24 hours a day as well and seven days a week. Um, so we have RAs that are on call, then we have another level of staff that they can call, and then there's another level of staff above that. So there's always somebody available um, if you need anything. Um, and then just some things to think about getting involved with and getting engaged with while you are um, on campus. So explore the clubs and organizations, honor societies that we have available. Um, there's gonna be a session next week um, presented by Elise Michaud, um, and she's gonna go into all the different clubs and organizations that we have available on campus, how to get involved, how to start your own club. Um, but if you wanna start browsing, Shine is a really great place to do that. You can get, get to Shine on the Rubik's Cube as well on my shoe, um, and you can see all the different organizations we have available. Um, also, something very important to us on the Hill is our traditions. Um, we have a lot of awesome traditions on campus. I'm very excited that we hopefully will have Christmas on the Hill back this year. Um, unfortunately, we had to postpone that because of COVID last year, um, but we have some very awesome traditions that happen on campus. So if you want to check out some of the things that happen every year, um, you can visit the Seton Hill website and check out annual traditions. Um, also, something very important to Seton Hill is service and giving back to the community. There's a lot of different opportunities to do one-time service, weekly service. Um, we also have something called alternative break trips, and those typically take place during spring break, um, and you'll go to a different location, and usually there's um, a certain topic that you're going to be studying and focusing while you're on that trip. Um, we have also have a lot of awesome athletic events, plays, recitals, um, other events that are happening on campus. There is always, every time I look at the Seton Hill event calendar, I'm pretty sure there's at least one or two things happening every day. 
Um, so you'll always find something to do. Um, also an opportunity to meet new people, learn new things. You're, there's gonna be people coming to campus from all across the United States, from other countries. Um, so it's an opportunity to get to know um, a variety of different perspectives and meet people that are gonna be your friends for life. I've been out of college for 15 years now and I still talk to some of my best friends from college on a weekly basis. Um, so you're gonna meet some people that are gonna be in your life for the long haul. So very exciting. Um, also, it's an opportunity to learn things inside and outside of the classroom. Um, I have taught many a first year student how to do laundry. There may be people who've never done laundry before. Um, so there's the chance to learn both the academic things in the classroom and then just some of those life skills um, outside of the classroom as well. And just some friendly advice for you, go to class, study, find an internship, and at the end, graduate. That's what we're all going towards. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Another cool thing about um, our community is that Greensburg is really vibrant. There's a lot going on. There's lots of things that you can do. Um, and there's lots of different ways to get around town. Um, so we do have the Westmoreland County Transit Authority, which is our bus system um, that kind of travels all around town. You can visit their website and see all the different bus schedules. Um, my partner actually works in downtown Pittsburgh. Um, and so he takes the bus into downtown Pittsburgh every day through the Westmoreland County Transit. Um, there's a, it's a little bit more limited if you're trying to go into the city, um, but there are lots of buses that kind of travel around the Greensburg area. Um, we also are located right next to an Amtrak station. Um, so if you're trying to travel to another major city or if you're trying to go back and forth from home, Amtrak is definitely a great option. Um, we also have a regional airport, um, which is in Lake Trobe, which is about 15 to 20 minutes down the street from campus. Um, I know that they have a round trip flight to Orlando for like $99. Um, so there's definitely not a ton of options out, to, out of the Arnold Palmer Regional Airport, but um, there are definitely some flights that are, it's literally right down the street. Um, and then we have the shootle, as we like to call it, um, which is our shuttle on campus. So in addition to kind of traveling around campus and going back and forth from downtown campus to main campus, um, it also goes to Walmart and to the mall. Um, so if you're just trying to do some shopping off campus and you don't have a car or you're not wanting to spend money on gas, um, you can take the shuttle to those two locations. Um, and then just some of our popular attractions in the area, Pennsylvania Avenues, where we have a lot of different shops and things like that. Um, we just got a new milkshake shop in town. Um, it's called Main Street Sweets. I would recommend following them on Instagram as well. They have these very decadent milkshakes. They're amazing. Um, but I definitely recommend checking out some of the, lo the local businesses in the Greensburg area. Um, there's also an Instagram page for downtown Greensburg that kind of advertises a lot of the events and things that are happening in town. Um, we have a really beautiful um, kind of nature scene. I don't know if it's considered a state park or a local park, um, but it's called Twin Lakes. And you can go on um, paddle boats. You can, there's picnic pavilions where you can go out and take and have a picnic, um, go fishing, lots of different things that you can do at Twin Lakes. And there's also a really great trail. So if you like to walk or run um, or rollerblade, anything like that, there's a great trail at Twin Lakes. And that's about 15 minutes from campus. Um, and then we do have the mall, the movie theater, um, restaurants, the movie theater is open now. So exciting. You can go see a movie at the AMC movie theater um, and lots of great restaurants in town. And if you're wanting to venture into the city, there's definitely lots of great um, restaurants in Pittsburgh. Um, and then I don't know, has any, have any of you heard of the Griffin Advantage program yet? Has that been brought up on any other sessions? Um, so if you wanna to go to this website here, it lists all of the local businesses that we partner with that offer a discount just for being a Seton Hill student. Um, so all you have to do is show your Seton Hill ID and you get, it's usually about 10 to 20% off um, depending on the location. So my favorite location that takes the Griffin or part of the Griffin Advantage program is Cold Stone. Um, I love ice cream. So Cold Stone participates in the Griffin Advantage program. Um, but there's lots, I think there's a list of probably 20 or 30 different businesses that take um, or that offer a discount to Seton Hill students. So those are just some quick ideas of ways that you can get involved in the community. So that was kind of the quick look at getting involved on campus, living on campus, just being a part of life on the hill. Um, so I'm now available if anybody has any questions, comments, concerns, Matt can feel free to chime in if you have any answers or other questions as well. We had a question, and if you can, uh, uh, so a little uh, preview tip, 
yeah. be, be stay tuned for next week where we have our virtual orientation session with the tour of the residence halls. But we had a question that came in. Can you talk about at least the residence halls and the use of the public spaces on different floors? So if you live on one floor, you can absolutely use the public facilities on different floors. Absolutely. Um, so the nice thing about the way that our residence halls is set up is you have to be a resident of the building to enter the building. But once you get into the building, you can kind of travel between floors um, in most of the buildings. There's a few that are a little bit more locked down on the floor. Um, but if you live in Brownlee, for example, and you have a friend who lives on a different floor, you can go visit, hang out in the lounge. Um, there's also a lounge space down on the lower level of Brownlee called the Bug um, that has a pool table. There's just like some lounge furniture. It's a nice place to go hang out. Um, and then in Havy, there's also um, some hangout spaces on the different floors. Um, and you can definitely feel free to visit friends if they live on other floors. Um, and then Deshantel, if you're living in Deshantel, um, there's a large lobby lounge area on the second floor um, that has a ping pong table and just some lounge furniture as well. Um, and a lot of the lounge spaces also have a TV, so you can go hang out and watch TV or Netflix or whatever. So uh, Bethany, another question, uh, any important rules regarding leaving campus, visitors? So when it comes to being a resident and leaving campus or having people come to campus, how do we manage that? Absolutely. So we believe when you come to campus that you are an adult. Um, so we don't have curfew, we don't have bed checks, we don't have anything like that. Um, so you're kind of free to go on and off campus however you wish. Um, we do have visitation hours. Um, so we, during the weekdays, you're allowed to have visitors between 9 p.m. and midnight. And then during the weekends, you are allowed to have visitors between 9 p.m. and 2 a.m. Um, it's still a little up in the air if we're going to be allowing guests from outside of Seton Hill, um, just because things have been rapidly changing over the last month or so. Um, the mask um, mandate was just lifted a couple of weeks ago. Um, so last year, we were not permitting any non Seton Hill students in the residence halls. Um, and we don't have a confirmation yet of what that's going to look like for this year. Um, but either way, we do permit um, guests from that are Seton Hill students to visit any other residence halls as long as they have someone escorting them um, who lives in that building. And it's only during those visitation hours. And we do not allow any overnight guests. Any other questions? Yes, going back to um the the weapons part. Yeah. Are pocket knives okay? Um, I believe it says. Do you know, Matt? It, it's a, up to a certain size. It is, and so pocket knives are normally acceptable. Another because I'm thinking of it when you asked, another one is uh, pepper spray. Pepper spray is allowed, but again, normally the small travel size as opposed to anything larger than that. Um, but yes, I'll pull it up to find the specific example, but, but pocket knives are uh, allowed. It's normally anything bigger than that that's larger than a steak knife is what would be considered a weapon and would not be allowed. Okay, thank you. Great question. Absolutely. Other questions? And if you think of something later on, or if it's something that you don't want to ask tonight, um, my supervisor's name is Corey. He's the director of um, residence and commuter life. And this is his email address here. And then this is me here, the assistant director. And this is my email and phone number there. So please feel free to reach out to us if you think of any questions. Um, also, as Matt said, we will be doing the residence hall tours next Tuesday. Um, so that will be an option for you to see all of the residence halls in a virtual format. Um, we'll have one of our staff members in each residence hall, and we'll be able to show what the rooms look like, what the common spaces look like, so you can really get a feel for campus. So a little thing to help you out if you have policy questions in particular, I just sent a, a link in the chat, but when you're in my shoe on the left hand side, my menu, there's going to be a button there that says policies. Every single policy that Seton Hill has is included in that website, Policy Tech. And from Policy Tech, it's very user-friendly. You can search any word and it will pull up all of our policies. So I quickly went into Policy Tech, searched for the word knife, and it came up. And so as an example, um, the specific possession of firearms and weapons that are prohibited, it talks about any firearm, including pellet guns, paintball guns, BB guns, any rifles, including air rifles, shotgun handguns and then knives it says with three inch blade or longer so again 
when you're thinking of a steak knife, um, that's normally the extent of what you're looking at. But anything three inch or longer of a blade is not allowed. So switch blades, slingshots, balloon launchers, bows, other lethal, lethal weapons or dangerous weapons. So it tries to be as extensive as possible um, to make sure that we're on the same page. And, and the, the main objective is again, to keep campus as safe as possible for everyone. So if you have a particular um, hobby or something that might have something, I, we had students in the past who you know, ask about bow staffs or again, swords or other things like that, um, feel free to ask and, let, and we'll let you know. We did have another question here, um, paper products, paper towels. So do we supply anything in the residence hall rooms? Great question. Um, those will not be available actually in the residence rooms, but in our common bathrooms, if you live in Brownlee, Havy, um, or Mara, um, there will be common bathrooms and all the toilet paper, paper towels, all of those kind of things are available in the bathrooms. Um, but if you're wanting something to have in your room, I would recommend bringing that. Um, and then if you're living in Deschantel, um, you will need to supply your own toilet paper um, because it is a private bathroom there. Great questions, everybody. Any other questions? Yes, but this one is in regards to athletics. Um, what would I do if I haven't been able to contact the coaches? Because um, I'm trying to get into the volleyball team and I haven't been able to contact the coaches. I can, I can connect with you after this and, and we'll get you set up. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, you ready for the next slide, Matt? Yeah, hopefully this was helpful. So yeah, so upcoming sessions. Um, so like I said, we're only halfway there. Um, and I'll say that the majority of the sessions that we had in May and, Ju and June were very much focused on getting to know one another, um, learning little tidbits of information. And if you've looked at the schedule, uh, our July sessions are a lot of great presentations from different departments, um, but we still have some, some opportunities here. So our next session is a Saturday at 8 p.m. It's our Griffin Gathering. So as a reminder, if you haven't attended a Griffin Gathering in the past, or if you haven't attended a trivia night in the past, and you wanna complete your path on Shine, we have a Griffin Gathering in July and a Griffin Gathering in August. So you attend those two sessions, and you'll complete the shoot, um, the getting to know fellow Griffins portion of your path. So if you haven't attended, and even if you have, anyone who's attended a Griffin gathering knows that it's great to attend all of them because you don't know who's gonna show up. Um, we use breakout rooms and shuffle people around and have lots of great conversations. Our orientation leaders facilitate the conversations. So you get to meet some upperclassmen and ask them questions and you get to meet some other fellow incoming students. So if you can, uh, 8 p.m. on, and actually I typed in Saturday, but I lied. It's Sunday the 11th, silly Matt. Um, so yeah, Sunday the 11th at 8 p.m. is our Griffin gathering. Then as Bethany and I mentioned, our next session then is Tuesday at 6 p.m., the residence hall virtual tour. The entire residence life staff will be in all of the different residence halls and they will show you what the rooms look like. Little disclaimer, they will not go from room to room to show you every specific room. Yes. But when you say, hi, I live in you know 101, they will show you a room that is identical to those rooms. So you'll be able to see all that. Um, and so that'll be happening there. Then uh, our session right after that, like I, uh, Bethany mentioned, Elise and show guide to getting involved. So all about student organizations and how to find out what's going on using Shine. Then the following week is a packed week. We have inclusion on the Hill with Keisha Jimerson and our director for uh, disability support services on Monday. We have wellness Wednesday on the 21st, which is gonna be counseling and health services. So if you and your family members have questions about counseling or health services, then Thursday, there is going to be a session for transfer students. So anyone who's a transfer who wants to talk to upper class transfer students about their experiences. And then uh, Saturday, the 24th, 10 a.m. This is our last of the three required sessions. So if you remember back in the beginning when you were talking with your admissions counselor, they mentioned that the one required session for virtual orientation is welcome to the Hill. We had one in May, we had one in June, and so this is our last one. If you already attended May and June, you don't need to worry about this one, but if you haven't attended, please make sure you attend this session. And then yeah, keep posted on the schedule on our website 
or on Shine, and, and, and you always get emails from the Road to the Hill email accounts. If you need anything, let us know. And I haven't seen any last questions coming in. So with that, I will uh, thank Bethany for presenting and giving us some great information, being able to answer all of your questions. And we at, uh, here will turn off the recording. And so if anyone chooses to stick around to ask any personal questions, you're more than welcome to do that.